We're flying casual. It's Sunday. Big news. The Han Solo movie trailer dropped during football. Oh, whoa, Wait, whoa. Record scratch. No, it did not. I'm James Azile, joined with Joshua Lucas. Hey, Josh. Hey, what's going on, bro? Not much. Just looking at the Den of Nerds videos, and you're lacking in a Han Solo trailer reaction. Yes, definitely <laughs> lacking in that category. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all are. Yep. I just wanted to talk to you about it because, you know, there was actually uh, Hello Greedo had a fantastic tweet. I don't know if you've seen this tweet from him. Oh. Unbelievable tweet. It says, Sunday, rumor, solo trailer. And then it says, rumor, solo trailer, Monday. And he goes, every single day of the week, and then please like and subscribe. At the nice. End. And, yep. it's, and that's basically what it has been. But I've been hearing a lot of people saying how they're worried about this film now, not because of all the shenanigans that's gone on, but because the trailer has been, quote, unquote, delayed. And mm-hmm. I look at this and I say, you know, and, and, and I know that there's articles out there now saying, well, it's been delayed because of reshoots, which I think is... Well, I'll get into what I think later, but I don't think that it has not been. I, as far as we know, it has not been delayed because it has never been announced. Yeah, you mean the trailer itself? Yeah, yeah. So it hasn't been delayed per se, and I get what you're saying there. But I will say that when you just look at what's you know normal marketing with uh, with a trailer, it would seem as though Disney has passed, presumably, on several pretty nice time spots to make this sort of an announcement and put this trailer out so i don't know it technically not delayed right because it was never announced like trailers coming out and then all of a sudden it's not but i think it's fair to say that there's probably a delay going on like on their end kind of behind the scenes could that delay be last jedi related if you look at last Jedi, it came it just came out you know, a month and a half ago. Mm. It was doing all right in the theater, but there was that divide right there. And then they look at it and you're like, well, let's not take away from The Last Jedi now. Because let's say two things come with this trailer, obviously. One, it could be the greatest trailer of all time. And we're like, God, oh, and it's, forget that I need to watch The Last Jedi. I want this. Right. Or it is so bad that it can even hurt. Or like, it's it's not very good. I won't say it's bad because I don't think any trailer is really that bad. Especially right. if you have the money like Disney. They're going to make a good trailer, I think. But let's say, look at the trailer. It's underwhelming. And then yeah. you go, well, I hated the Last Jedi. This doesn't. This looks like a pile of crap. And I don't care about Han Solo. So yeah. that could it could backfire. They're in a really tricky spot right now. Yeah, no, they're definitely in a tricky spot. You know, it's funny because you know you say like the the Last Jedi sort of backlashes. Are they are they avoiding that? I here's the reason why I actually don't think that's playing as much of a role in it as people think. Because I honestly believe that Disney could have maybe put a trailer in front of Last Jedi, put Han Solo right then and there on The Last Jedi. And I think that that would have been a really smart play for them. And the the fact that they did not kind of makes me think that they're sort of still scrambling on this movie. Now, maybe it's not like a scramble, like, oh my God, what is this movie? Like, well, how are we going to make this happen? But it could be something like, Remember when we got all those Rogue One trailers and they had just tons of footage that never ended up in the movie at all? So it could be one of those things where they're trying to sort of avoid that. Maybe they're trying to see like what kind of a tone they want to hit in the actual trailer. So there could be a lot of different reasons. Although I will say this, after Last Jedi was received the way that it was, it is possible that they did put a delay in there and they're sort of like, well, let's let this kind of die down. But... Wouldn't you say that enough time has passed? I mean, the movie's not even showing in China anymore, so. Well, Star Wars, but Star Wars never does well in China. I mean, this yeah, is the worst, but they've, they've gone progressively lower and lower. Okay, so I was talking to Rob, Rob McDonald, who loves The Last Jedi. Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> but he made a comment, he goes, this trailer's starting to feel like the Gambit movie right now. Oh, no. And I said, I said, but here's, this is the thing, though. It's like, they've never announced, it's not like Disney or Lucasfilm has come out and said, Watch this show at this time. There will be, it's like nothing's ever been tweeted, right. mentioned. Mm-hmm. So you can't really say like I don't think it's fair to to blame them for whatever reason. Now, Star Wars Junk is reporting that the trailer uh, will be coming this week. Uh, I mean, again, rumor. Take it for what it is. It probably won't. <laughs> I mean, who knows? But let's say here's the way I looked at it when I was talking to Rob. I said, you know, we got that Lego quote unquote leaks. I like they keep leaking like. There's like the last giant divided. Nobody wants a Han Solo movie. Fans are outraged. A leak is perfect, and I I personally really like the, 
the images that they got. I know Aaron was like, that's not Han Solo, which is a huge obstacle for this movie to Definitely. overcome. Hundred percent. But the trailer, that's the thing, like the trailer needs to address almost address that. Be like, he's Han, take it. Yeah. Um so then that's the first domino to drop. Then last week we get the synopsis. There's a second domino. I think that they are on, a, they have a pattern. They know what they're doing. And I think this is all fitting in. And I think there's a reason we haven't seen it. I, I'm not marketing. They, they pay people a lot of money to make these decisions. Yeah. You know, like they have people that go up there like, when's the best time to market this movie? And look, I, I'm really, I think it's going to be a good movie. Like I've said it on record. It's, it's going to be good. Well, and I will eat those words if I have to. And Deadpool, Deadpool moved its release date. And I think it removed its release date because I think the word is that this could be a decent film. And I think it, it will not crush at the box office. I'm thinking 115 to 125 opening weekend yeah. uh, tops is what I'm saying. But to my point, Domino 1, Lego Leak. Domino yeah. 2, Synopsis. The third Domino is about to drop. And so Star Wars, a new Star Wars junk on Twitter is reporting that someone from AMC said that it's going to drop on Wednesday and then be attached to Maze Runner. Again, take that as you will. However, it kind of makes sense to me, Josh, because they drop it Monday morning, 9 a.m., whatever, on Good, Good Morning America, same as, uh, as the Infinity War trailer, let's say. Yeah. But then they have this YouTube show called The Star Wars Show where right. they could bank even more that same day, just a few hours later, and have a whole show based on the Solo trailer, and then you can interview someone from Solo and show more uh, marketing from that and then they have this whole outlook right there on that yeah no i mean look we're running out of like room for it not to come out essentially like every single day that this trailer does not come out it it's just bad for them at this point so they're starting to get it's like a it's like a really weird situation but let me ask you this just to side act bar here do you can you ever remember a movie that has been sort of this dependent on its first trailer. I, I just think that because of the situation that the fandom's in, because of everything that's going on, this trailer has a lot of pressure on it. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah I'm definitely agree. The only, I have one question for you now to counter that question, because yes. I do agree with you. But also, we are knee-deep in Star Wars and fandoms and fanboys and uh, Den of Nerds. Like, you know, like the whole, yeah. that whole thing. But... I'm thinking to myself, and I, I met someone from, he lives in uh, Vega, uh, Vegas, he lives in Vegas, and he goes, I love Rogue One, Rogue One is the best, he's like, I love it, he's like, I can't wait for the next Rogue One, that's the Han Solo movie, right, that's what he, he knew it wasn't a sequel, but he referred to it as like, and he was genuinely looking forward to it, yeah. yeah, and like, he's not a Star Wars guy, like, he just, he's like, you know, I like whatever, but he's like, I loved Rogue One a lot, I'm looking forward to Han Solo, I haven't spoken to him in a while, but, like, someone like that, is the trailer that big a deal to them? Like, because for us, here's what, here's the interesting thing that I look at this is, we're like, where's the trailer? I mean, we're doing videos. This is my third video on where the hell is this trailer. Right. But we're, I mean, we bought our ticket. Like, we're going to see yeah. this movie. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? So does the average moviegoer really care at this point? And when, like, if it drops, let's say, right now on a football game or tomorrow on, yeah. like, whatever, they're going to be like, oh, what? That's cool. Like, like, is the lack of trailer hurting the average moviegoer? I would say yes. And the nope. reason I think yes is because when you look at those casual fans, I think one of the things here that's kind of unspoken in marketing and just in like the modern age of media is the word of mouth is still super strong. So like word of mouth is very, very important. So I think even the casual people, they're going to be on the sofa watching the game or whatever. They're going to watch the trailer but then they're going to turn to their Star Wars fan friend or, you know, they'll go on YouTube or whatever. Like there is the people that are fans of this stuff are going to have to be the ambassador for this movie in order for the casual people to buy in. That's just kind of my opinion. So the problem that we have now is that there were, like you said, there were a ton of people, ca hardcore fans, that never really wanted a Han Solo movie. You can count me among them. I never wanted a Han Solo movie. I I'm not, I I'm in a weird spot where I'm not like pissed about it anymore, but there was a moment where I was seriously mad. Like I was that upset that, that we were getting a Han Solo movie because I'm just like, okay, Disney, like here we go again. You know what I mean? Like, oh, wait, you're going to sprinkle a little Vader in there? You know what I mean? Sprinkle a little Boba in there? By the way, 
a video coming up on the Den of Nerds with James yeah. about Boba Fett. <laughs> yeah. Check it out. <laughs> it's going to be dope. But um, in all seriousness, like it, it frustrated me. So you have a whole group of fans that are already frustrated about the movie. So they might tell their their people, eh, you know, whatever, it's a Han Solo movie. I'm not that pumped. That's not going to inspire much confidence. On top of that, because of The Last Jedi divide, there's probably a bunch of these people out there that no matter what we see, we could see the dances with wolves of trailers, and they will say, mm, yeah. screw you, Star Wars. You've ruined my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> but you and know so what? That's, that's bad, too. Yeah, I mean, and look, opinions are opinions, and everybody has their own. So if, if The Last Jedi is going to keep you from seeing the next Star Wars film, then that's up to you. But for me, I'm going to go see because here's, what, here's the thing to Han Solo's point is I'm interested – because Kazan wrote this, and, and I yeah. did a high ground on it a couple weeks ago where I read the art, I read an article where Kazan talks about the Han Solo script, and this was before the Disney acquisition. Like George Lucas and Kathleen Kennedy pulled them and said, look, we're going to do more Star Wars. Yeah. Which one do you want to write? And one of George Lucas's ideas was for a young Han Solo. And if you remember, George Lucas had Han Solo in Revenge of the Sith in the original right. plot, uh, like right. outlines or whatever. He's supposed to be a little kid on Kashyyyk raised by Wookiees. He had like and a so, room so, or something. It was crazy. Yeah, it was like, George Lucas loves Han Solo. Kazan picked a Han Solo script to write because it is his favorite character. They removed the directors five months out of shoot, five months, with only five months left of shooting, obviously because they were not seeing the vision of the script, which also was reported as one of the best Star Wars script. Correct, which, correct. Which, depending on how you view Star Wars, some people only think there are two good Star Wars, so I don't know what that... Yeah, I know. Right. Rob. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, like yeah. if you factor all of that in, and then they, they go in and they get Uncle Ron to come in and do it. And if anyone's going to direct it the way the script is presented, because you know as well as I do that a good script does not always translate into a good movie. It, right. like, it, it, but if you're going to get someone that you can bank on, I would think Ron Howard is the guy who can come in and he's just like, this is how the script is. Boom, boom, boom. And yep. I, I don't think it's going to be anything too out there. It's just going to be shot for shot what the script says. And that's what Kazan wanted. That's what Kennedy wanted, and that's probably what good old George Lucas wanted. Right. No, yeah, I'm I can get down with that. In fact, the that whole thing about the script is like the only thing that has kind of kept me enthused about the movie, right? So, you know, continuously hearing that. Uh, Kasdan kind of created Han Solo. I mean, he didn't create the character, but he sort of like gave he us a him. lot of the stuff. Yeah, he gave us like the stuff that we know him as, you know. He really yeah. like filled it out. And so that's awesome. And he worked on this with his son. So that's really, yeah. really cool. Like I'm excited. And I personally think that Howard probably came in and shot like literally the whole movie again. And so yeah. the reshoots that we're hearing about now are like, those are to tie it up. So like basically they probably shot page by page, then they edited it together and then they sat back, they looked at the edit, and they were like, well, you know, we could really punch this scene up if yeah. we had an emotional moment here. That's how reshoots work. It's part of the process. It's awesome. So like, I'm not concerned about the movie being good. You know what I'm saying? Like, I actually think the movie will be pretty dang good. We'll probably enjoy the heck out of it. Uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of secretly hoping that like I'm really, really blown away. But uh, my third best Star Wars movie. film. Hashtag third best Star Wars. Hey, look, man, and we're going to talk about Boba Fett, but I got some things that uh, if they do some certain things with Boba Fett, I will be very, very happy with this picture. But it, it for me, the thing is, we'll save that for, for your channel. You need the views. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the thing is, for me, is it's more like, are we going to win back the grumpy fans? You know what I mean? And, and I think that in some ways this film is designed to do that. It's it's very fan service-y, you know, if they give us yeah. even more badass Vader, if they give us, you know, some really, really cool Boba, if we get the Kessel Run, if the dice play a big role. Like, there's a lot that they could do that would be completely fan service-y. But, but it all goes back to this trailer, bro. It goes back to this trailer. If this trailer comes out, and my personal opinion is they should have subverted this by literally doing like some troll type Deadpool trailers where you have like, you know, this crazy buildup, like the exclusive Han Solo trailer. And it just like shows like Han Solo just kind of sitting in a chair, <laughs> you know what I mean? Or something, you know, like just do something like really, really whack have like inside the millennium Falcon and then just go inside the Falcon and there's some dude mopping it or something. 
Like, you know what I mean? Like nothing, nothing exciting. And that way they could have sort of had these trolls come out and be like, Rawr! and then everybody's like kind of laughing though. Cause it's kind of a good time. Yeah. And it sort of cushions the whole thing. And, you know, you could even like wink at the audience a little bit and been like, uh, you know, Luke Skywalker, you know, just said something like about Luke Skywalker with the milk or something, you know, uh, <laughs> they could have been self-aware and had some fun with it, which I think is something that even George kind of was into. Uh, Kathy is not that way. She does not like that kind of stuff. So, no, it's... so I don't know, man, that's kind of what I'm, what I'm seeing uh, this trailer. Yeah. This is the craziest thing as far as a trailer goes that I've experienced while, while doing this content stuff. So. Is there anything in the trailer that you are like, we, like you have to see it? Like, I, we're going to obviously get more than one trailer and TV spots, but there, is there anything in the very first trailer that you think will make or break everything going forward? Well, it's all about his performance, right? It's it's just him as 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 Han, and it, it, there's so many different aspects to that. How, how does he talk? How does he move his face? Um, how, what's his body language like? You know, uh, there is something as dumb as the hair. You know, like it, it literally soon as soon as the trailer goes up, it's microscope time and not, you know, especially for the hardcore people, because mind you, something that a lot of people tend to forget is they brought in this acting coach for for Eldon. There was there was a lot of talk about how this dude was not getting it done. And so, you know, that that is the whole thing. Let's talk about this acting coach for a second, because yeah. I, I'm on a, I think I'm on a different page than a lot of people on this. Because okay. I'm going to have faith in him because they, they did the casting. They looked at a gazillion actors and they went with this guy. They fired the directors who was who were directing the actor in a direction that also was reported that he called like his agent or a producer right. and said, this is not Han Solo. I don't like this. So my question is, was the was the acting coach called separately from his call of complaint like was it called like he like maybe maybe this is what happened uh we want you to to play it this way play it this way right and he's like that's not how solve and then kathleen kennedy a uh, kaz and they all see the footage like what's what's happening with this kid get him someone in there they bring in the acting coach acting coach he's, he finds out he's like no no it's not me and he makes the phone call I, that's a little bit optimistic maybe i'm way off but that's what that's my hope for the whole thing because yeah. like how do you go through five thousand ten million app like actors yeah and then five months in you're like this kid is terrible how does that happen yeah well i mean look there's a lot there's a lot to unpack there I, look you could be right about the acting coach and honestly it could all be sort of you know being taken out of context it could be being blown up you know the media tends to make things sensational but at the end of the day we're gonna see it you know what i mean like and, and i don't think there's a certain degree of subjectivity here but not really. Like, if he gives an objectively bad Han Solo, objectively not like what we're used to Han Solo, dude, it's over. Like, it's just oh, yeah. over. So, um, as far as all of that goes, like, I, I don't know if I am on the optimistic side. And you're right. Like, if they go through 5,000 people for this, like, holy crap, like, they better have gotten the right person to do it. But, you know, that kind of goes back to like what is this casting like you know what i mean like who exactly was there yeah. um and different things like that i'll say this like all you need to do you don't need an acting coach make the dude you wake this dude up at 4 a.m every day and you put on empire strikes back and you just have him watch empire strikes back every single day and then go to set and, you, and he would be fine don't you think kazan would have been in the auditioning process like he would have had a like a say in it uh wow that i hope so right you would right, hope yeah. so you would you would really really hope so but look i'm look it's a good point he went through a lot of uh, they went through a lot of people with the auditions it's it's a very good point also with the he, he did indeed contact them and say that he wasn't comfortable with what they were doing as far as directors for sure but i mean look a lot of this is a mental thing and maybe look it's not beyond the realm of possibilities that he nails auditions and can't perform on set like the thing is, I, I, I kind of liken it to um, like the athlete thing. Like you look at Tiger Woods, like Tiger Woods, the greatest golfer of all time. He gets inside his own head and then he just can't golf the same way. So uh -huh. I don't know if like something maybe happens on set or, you know, all this pressure starts to build and he starts to feel a certain way about it. But um, like 
I just hope that's the one thing. You know, you, you asked me if, if there's one thing I need to see in the trailer. I just need a good Han Solo. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, uh, 100%. And, and when the trailer comes out, you and Rob will most likely be doing a vote of no confidence on the performance of Eric Reich in that trailer. I know. So. And that's the thing. I don't think we're going to be the only people doing that on the internet. And the thing yeah. is, we'll uh, be the first. Yeah, we'll be the first and oh, the best. We won't. You won't be available, so we won't be the first. Yeah, crap. But we'll be the best, <laughs> I promise. Yeah. Uh, but dude, like, uh, like this, I do not feel, uh, I do not feel good for this guy. Like, I, I, he, this no. is a lot of pressure. His his career could be over, uh-huh. legitimately, oh, yeah. and that sucks. But uh, that's kind of what you get involved with when you uh, when you sign up for Han Solo. You know, for Han Solo. That's. I didn't envy anybody going for that one because yeah yeah well like I said Aaron saw that picture of the leak quote unquote leak and she was like that's not Han that was her that was the only thing she I said. know and if he doesn't even look like him that's something you got to really get past especially because we're hearing that the timeline here is not as young Han Solo as we thought it might be pretty stinking close which is to Rogue One which is strange to me yeah and let's yeah let's let's venture into Rogue one territory here there yes. are going to be easter eggs in this Han Solo there is no Rogue One there is no Rogue One I will say this I mentioned how Kazan wrote this script years and years and years ago 2012 before the acquisition he was asked to write this so asked he was hired he was paid a good chunk of money although also he did turn down the prequels oh. Kazan turned down the prequels but he just he came back to do this Han Solo so I look last thing I'll say there is something to the Han Solo movie anyway moving on so, there are going to be Easter eggs. Uh, like you mentioned, Vader. We did a video on Vader like six months ago, and then like a month ago, a couple months ago, they're like, Vader is a Han Solo. And we're like, well, yeah, we talked about, like, read the news, dude. Yeah. <laughs> we don't, I don't, I, you, you do. It might have been confirmed or something, you know what I mean? I don't think it's, I think it was just the same article that we read. Uh, just people read it later. But we, um, so Vader might be in it, obviously. But one thing that's kind of catching my eye is, you know, they have these spinoff films, and we're going to talk about one on your little channel. <laughs> In a little bit, but I'm going to go right into the idea that this could tie into Rogue One, and I think it is kind of cool if these spinoff films all have a little piece of connective tissue to them. Yeah, very yeah. minuscule, like not like you know K2SO is going to show up in every movie, though he could be in. If Han Solo is an Imperial, we will see a K2SO droid. Yeah, in the yeah, background, that'd be pretty, for sure. That'd sure. be so cool. But what I was thinking is, we know. Okay, so the Pikes are going to be in this. We've seen the Lego leak. There is a pike, and they are spice smugglers, and blah, 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 blah. Han uh, smuggles. Obviously, that's what he does. That's how he gets in trouble with Java. Is there a chance the tie in with Rogue One with this movie could be that Han unknowingly smuggles a Kyber crystal? Yeah, I mean, that would be really cool. You know what's funny is this sort of makes it gives me the feeling of the Lando comic where he steals that ship and then it's full of all those Sith artifacts and like just what a cool idea like it was just so sweet so like yeah maybe they get in trouble that's why Vader's after them you know and maybe that's why Boba's after them they are smuggling something have a change of heart you know what I mean are end up inadvertently stumbling into a big adventure because I think that's a big thing in Star Wars is like you go to do this one thing oh crap you're stumbling into a big adventure that's pretty sweet. So, yeah, if it tied into Rogue One, you know, you said something earlier when that dude from Vegas told you about how the next Rogue One was Han Solo. It would be interesting if there if there is some kind of a flow of story with these movies, even Obi-Wan, because technically mm-hmm. that's probably going to take place in this very similar time period. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, what if you're kind of getting these snapshots of that time period? You know, I'm working on a video right now about why we definitely need the backstory on Snoke because some of my Snoke videos, people were were like commenting and they're like, well, why do you even need the backstory? You know what I mean? Like, why do you even need the backstory? And I'm thinking in my head, like, do you not know Star Wars? Like the thing is we always get these backstories. They get filled out. So like from a certain point of view is a great example. They did a whole freaking novel of little things in the Star Wars world that you never needed to know that they showed you from a different angle. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so that is a huge part of this universe. It's part of the flavor of this thing. But if that's what they're doing with these, uh, anthology films, it, it would be cool. Like, what if you could think of these three anthologies as a trilogy? That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. I'd be totally down for that. I, I, it's just, 
little small things, like you said, just tie in, tie in. And we're going to do the Boba Fett thing a little, because, but just little tiny threads here and there. And yeah. I don't know, I don't know where I would pin it on the on the somewhat official, not official Obi Wan film that may or may not be coming yeah. in twenty twenty. When is that getting announced? Is Han Solo the reason that hasn't been officially announced yet? Dude, they have a whole bunch of problems. So it's not like uh, they. It's funny because even when things were going well, they had problems. Like it's always basically business is just a bunch of problems, right? And so they have a ton of things that they have to figure out, and they're they're constantly trying to do that. They've had issues with directors. They're probably trying to take special care to make sure that doesn't happen again. They have issues with their canon. They're probably taking special care to make sure that doesn't happen again. I think that's why the Thrawn novel is delayed. I think that's why this uh, Last Jedi novelization is taking some time. Because they figured out... Because the business model that makes sense, right, is make this book and have it launch like, right after the movie. People will be hungry for it. They'll, they'll get it. The problem is it's working off an old version of the script. They're not in good communication with the people creating this stuff. So there's holes. So it devalues the very thing they're trying to do. So I don't know, man. They got a lot of issues. So I, I'm not surprised that they're sort of taking their time with the Obi-Wan movie. I think the Obi-Wan movie is like <sighs> episode nine should be incredible. But I almost feel like the people that hated The Last Jedi, it's over. Like this, this saga is dead to them. And a lot of those people didn't even like the la or didn't like the Force Awakens for different reasons, you know what I mean? But they're like they're over it, and so for the Star Wars brand itself, this Obi Wan movie is incredibly important. You know, right. like it, it's it ties people back to to certain things that they really really like about the film. So yeah they they just have a lot of stuff they got to figure out and uh i'm sure that they've got a ton of talented people working on those problems my biggest concern is the canon thing i really yeah. need uh i need canon to be fixed in ironclad we're gonna we've been talking about it for a little while now but we're gonna do a video soon on the problem with canon because there yeah. is because uh, you tell me tweeted me or not me they not tweeted me a few weeks ago and i tweeted back they were like why am i spending my money on these books if they're not connected then no one's for caring sure. about them my response, my first response was, do you enjoy them? And they said, yes. And then we had a full conversation about the problems with it. Because, look, some of the books are very enjoyable. But do not do not label a book the journey to your Correct. movie and then have it not be a journey to your movie. But it's, right, right. But it's to me, it's beyond that. Because the journey oh, this to... Is the, this is the beginning of... Right, right, right. No, but I, but I see your point. I see your point. Like the, the marketability of like the journey to stuff and, and then that not paying off, that's a huge problem. But beyond even that in 2014, when they killed the expanded universe, because I enjoy the expanded universe, I got a great book here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you this. this. I'm reading this right now, going through this old Republic, John nice. Jackson Miller, dude, this comic is incredible. I can't believe they don't adapt more of the great stories that they have. Uh, but just, I guess my thing is when they killed it, part of the draw for all of the new stuff was the fact that it tied in. So it's inherently built in to everything they yep. do. So look, did I enjoy it? Yeah. But dude, if you're just reading for enjoyment, like just to be real, if you're just reading for enjoyment, go read the Plagueis novel. It's not canon. It's incredible. You know what I mean? James Lucino, ridiculous. It's incredible. Yeah. Like you want to go read something for enjoyment? Go read Dawn of the New Jedi. That the, those graphic novels are incredible. I'm not gonna buy any of the new Disney stuff though. You know what I mean? Like so that's the that's the issue. Yeah, we'll get into this. Much. Andrew and and Brock did a video yesterday where they talk about uh, why Disney had to kill the EU, and I think they did. They had to stop it because of what what they said they were doing. Now whether or not it paid off is that's another topic, but I think moving forward, they're like, well, we have all this stuff, but we can't, you know, let's just say it's legends and we'll do our own thing and everything will be connected. And like I said, if whether or not that paid off, that's what we'll talk about. <laughs> but I think we're good to go right now. Han Solo's coming. The trailer is dropping uh, either tomorrow or the next day or the next day or the next day, or at some point between now and May 25th, we will see the Han Solo trailer. You, you guys are going to text like, I think I might be in front of the movie. We are going to be yeah. getting 
<laughs> solo trailer at some point. Uh, you know, I, like I said, we uh, Wednesday is a rumor. Sun to the, right now when you're watching this is a what if it's it might, what if it came out while we were recording? What if what if it actually is right in front of this video? Yeah, <laughs> that'd be hilarious. In front of this yeah. video. Let us know if it was because I'll, I'll watch this I, video. I'll go watch it. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah, it probably just dropped. I'm gonna check my phone. Oh, I got yeah. it. Um, but yeah, we're gonna cover like crazy channel. I'm gonna do a reaction on it. Uh, right away, we'll get that up as soon as possible. I might just do a fake reaction and put the audio for it after. <laughs> I'm just excited. Dude, just we'll do, do like a re- crying reaction. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> uh, so we'll, we have a reaction. We're going to have a high ground review of it. You're going to do a vulnerable confidence. And we'll do a, a fl- probably flying casual where we just talk about it. And then at, we'll, we'll do a bunch of solos, a big thing for me, because I'm looking forward. I mean, it's the next Star Wars film. Yeah. And, uh, and that's what we cover on this channel is Star Wars. But Josh, we'll wrap up Flying Casual right now. Where can everybody find you if they don't already know? Check me out at the Den of Nerds. Uh, we got a YouTube channel. It's pretty cool. This guy's gonna do a video with me in just a bit about Boba Fett. It's actually pretty pretty cool. I'm pumped to talk about that. Uh, Den of Nerds.com, Den of Nerds Facebook. We cover nerdy things, so check me out there. Yeah, and guys, thanks for watching. And as always, may the force of others be with you. Eight out of ten times. Hey scumbags, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.